Aston Martin driver Sebastian Vettel crossed the finish line of the Hungarian Grand Prix in second position. Both the German driver and the team were ecstatic with that result. And as the German pulled up on the side of the track, halfway round the slowing down lap, everything looked great. However, two hours later, the FIA disqualified the Aston Martin car. There wasn't enough fuel left in the tank to allow the FIA to take a sample. Instead of the one litre required, there was just 300 millilitres of fuel left in the fuel tank. And the rules are very clear on this. Every single Formula One car must have at least one litre of fuel in the tank at the end of the race. The reason for this is the FIA will take a fuel sample after the race to check the legality of the fuel and they need one litre of fuel to take the sample. And there's actually three samples they take. One goes to the team, one is tested and one is archived by the FIA in case there's an appeal or anything like that. Well, without, uh, with only 300 millilitres of fuel in the tank, it was pretty clear cut that Aston Martin couldn't appeal the situation. However, they did and then dropped the appeal. And to explain a little bit more about that, I'm joined here by Craig Scarborough and a lump of Formula One car, Craig. Uh, yes, this is a Formula One fuel tank. Um, most people have never seen one of these. Um, very flexible, as you can see. And uh, this is with the root of the problems. Yeah, absolutely. So it was actually, it wasn't the fuel tank itself that was the problem, was it? It was some of the components inside the tank that caused the problem because Aston Martin believed there was 1.4 litres of fuel in the tank. And actually it turned out there was, wasn't. No. Well, the teams can accurately measure the fuel that comes out of the fuel tank through the FIA fuel flow meter. So they knew exactly how much had gone out. They'd weighed the fuel in, so their calculations should have been right. But fuel was lost in another way, in quite an unusual way, not one that I've ever heard of before. Um, it didn't leak, um, and it wasn't a problem with a pump that couldn't get the fuel out from the bottom of the tank or somewhere else. It's not really something I've come across before. Now, you might be surprised, but F1 fuel tanks are very lightly pressurized. There's an air pump that just keeps them in a slightly positive pressure. And they do this for reasons uh, mainly to keep the lift pumps that take the fuel from the bottom of the tank and put it into the fuel collector, which is where the FI take its sample from. And if you didn't have this positive pressure, you get cavitation in the pumps and that causes problems in lifting up the last of the fuel. What happened, it would appear, is there was some kind of air leak from the tank. Now it could have been from the tank itself, but more likely through the pressure relief valve that sits at the top and just allows the tank to breathe, lets air in and out. And because the sensor on the pump saw that there wasn't the pressure in the tank that it needed, the pump worked harder and harder and harder and was overworking. And eventually what happened, the excess pressure of the pump literally just blew fuel vapor out of the tank and that accounted for the lost fuel. And that's why the team couldn't produce this one litre sample. They only had that 300 millimetres, which is about the size of a can of Coke at the exactly. bottom of the fuel tank. But actually, the team took the fuel tank away and actually the whole car was impounded at the end of the Grand mm -hmm. Prix because the team appealed and they thought, well, there is this fuel in there. They didn't understand the air leak issue. And one of the reasons that the team thought they probably could still find the fuel inside the fuel tank is this isn't just a big bag with nothing on the outside. Mm -hmm. It's deep inside here. There's lots of pockets and baffles. And when you look inside, there's lots of little flaps and doors and even zipped sections <laughs> I noticed on this one. It almost looks like somebody's coat, but it, there's so many little areas that the fuel could end up in. So actually they could squish and squeeze the tank and may have been able to produce that one litre sample that was required, but actually it wasn't there. No, that's normally what would happen. They simply can't get the fuel out the very bottom of the tank and that's why sometimes drivers run dry. But in this case, the fuel was lost through vapour, blown out of the vents. And that was really it. I mean, Aston Martin were really quite unlucky. They weren't aware of that air pressurisation issue. They weren't aware that they were short on fuel. And when it became clear to them, they told Sebastian Vettel to park up the car on the side of the track, but it was a little bit too late. The Williams team were slightly aware of their cars being close to the limit as well. They stopped both drivers at the end of the pit lane as soon as they crossed the finish line, and that probably saved them from suffering the same fate. So it's unfortunate for Aston Martin, but the rules, as they say, are the rules.